beloved, we have come together in the presence of God to witness the joining together of this man and this woman in holy matrimony. The sacred relationship of marriage was established by God in creation, and our Lord Jesus Christ adorned marriage by his presence in the performance of his first miracle at the wedding in Cana of Galilee. The Apostle Paul chose marriage to symbolize the union between Christ and his church, and Holy Scripture commends marriage to be honored among all people. The union of husband and wife in heart, body, and mind is intended by God for their mutual joy, for the help and comfort given to one another in prosperity and adversity, and when it is God's will for the procreation of children in their nurture and the knowledge and love of the Lord. Therefore, marriage is not to be entered into unadvisedly or lightly, soberly, deliberately, and in reverent fear before God. Into this holy union, these two young people, Andrew and Lori, have come to join their hearts and their lives as one. To the the Word of God describes in the book of 1 Corinthians, which is known by many to be the love chapter, exactly what your love is to be and what it should not be. And then 1 Corinthians 13 says, the Word of God describes the kind of love that you ought to have for each other. Love is patient. It is, it is not jealous. Love does not brag, it is not arrogant, it does not act unbecomingly, it does not seek its own, it is not easily provoked, it does not take into account of wrong suffered, it does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Love never fails. As you begin your new life today, hear those words that your love is to bear all things. No matter what challenges you are confronted by, face them together. Believe in each other. Trust in each other. Bear each other's burdens. Share each other's happiness. It believes all things. It believes in the hope and the love of God you hear. It believes in the hope and love that if you share, you can have hope that your love will continue to grow. It endures all things. And most importantly, it never fails. If you stand together, your love will never fail. If you trust in each other, your love will never fail. The ceremony of marriage in which you come to be united is first the oldest ceremony in the world, celebrated in the beginning in the presence of God himself. Marriage is a gift of God given to comfort the sorrows of life and to magnify its joy. Marriage is the blasting of hands, the blending of hearts, the union of two lives in one. Your marriage must stand not by the authority of the state, nor by the seal on your wedding certificate, but by the strength of your love and by the power of your faith in each other and of God. You can have this kind of home if you continue to recognize God as the source of romance and love and affection for these are his gifts. Build your home on a spiritual foundation. With God you will have everything. Without him you will have nothing. Now as you join hands, I want you to appear to share your love one to the other. But before I do that, who gives? This woman for this man. Thank you very much. That's a sign of trust. Trust me. 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 To you, sir. Will you 
We will live together in the holy covenant of marriage. We will live for comfort, honor, and keep us in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others. Be faithful to her as long as you go shelter. We shall simply look at her and say, I will. You, Lord, will you have this man for your husband? We live together in the holy covenant of marriage. Will you love him, comfort him, honor and keep him in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others? Be faithful to him as long as you hope shall live. Yes, oh, that's Adam's ball. All of you witnessing these promises, will you do all in your power to uphold these two young people in their marriage? If so, I promise to them by saying, I will. You are all here because you've specifically have chosen to share in this special moment. That's an honor that they have bestowed on you, but you have a responsibility to them. Those that are married and have been married for a while, share your wisdom with them, share your experience, share your knowledge. Let them hear what marriage has brought you to and how it has brought you together. Always encourage them when they seek encouragement. Our Lord Jesus Christ taught that at the beginning of creation God made them male and female. <coughs> For this cause a man shall leave his father and mother and shall cleave to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. Consequently they are no longer two, but one flesh. You have come to be made husband and wife. The Lord should directly at each other's eyes. Bless them for their 
so you understand, I've asked the bride to receive the ring for herself from the best man, because it is my feeling that the first two people that should touch those rings, once they are blessed, are the people that are going to wear them. So I'm going to ask the best man to step forward with the ring. I'm going to ask the bride to take the ring one at a time. Heavenly Father, these ah. words are an outward symbol of an inward faith, an inward commitment, a sign to the world that they have chosen each other. Stand in front of the world, and you want us all to know that these rays symbolize the Let the beauty of the gold be outshined by the share it anyway. Let the ever-ending singing of those rings ever ending simply alone. Never ending. Let's share these rings one with the other day in the presence of the witnesses. <coughs> Shared love, it shared kindness, it shared knowledge, 
it's shared wisdom. That did all that they could do to prepare her for this day. Now she stands as the woman that she was destined to be, that they wished for her to be. She stands at the threshold of her new life. Let her know that they will follow her every step of her life. They will be decided to support her. Right, sir. Sure. 